Hey, it's Austin here, baby. Hey, it's Deshaun, baby. And it's a light bulb moment. Hell yeah. It's a motivational podcast. It sure is. Mm-hmm. Is it? It is. Mm-hmm. Y'all check it out. Check it out. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is the Light Bulb Moment Podcast. Again, experimenting with our Zoom, which I actually really like, by the way. Um, I'm Deshaun. And uh, we got Austin here to my, I guess that would be my left. And we have our I'm special just- guest. Miss Lindsay to the, well, on mine's like you're beneath me. <laughs> so, like right oh. here is Lindsay. Lindsay, what's your last name? Harper. Harper. Lindsay Harper, our yeah. financial expert. Yes. Thank you for introducing me. <laughs> and you ain't even say Deron this time. You get all professional when we do interviews and shit. You just go about the show now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me, you guys. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for coming. Yeah, man. So, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been messing with credit or messing with financial stuff? Well, financial stuff, well, it go, well, let's just start from the beginning. Okay. When I got called in my college dorm room in 1998, Okay. When I was 19 years old and Discover Card called me and said, hey, do you want a credit card? I said, yeah, I do. I was waiting. I'm about to go on spring break. Right. I could not wait until I got a hold of that card, right? I didn't know squat about credit back then. You know what happened with that card? I took my black behind down to Daytona Beach for Black College Reunion. I charged it up. I took some cash advances, not knowing I was paying 28% interest. Damn! Yes, cash advances on that particular card were 32%. So I'm like- Right, just living the life, right? What kind of cash advance you was taking? I think I had up to $200 and and, and that was 30% on top of that. So let's just, I got that my second semester of my freshman year of college. So by so the time- So if you took $200 out in cash advancement, you was paying them back like- And 30% three. interest. Ooh. Almost like three, right? I ain't, yeah. I ain't doing good math right now, but- I'm not doing math right now either, but you guys get the point. Yeah. That was the beginning- That's 60 of, bucks. Of my credit ignorance. Right, right. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And that was over 20 years ago. So that's how it started. So anytime I went to go get cre- any type of credit, I got charged an astronomical interest rate, not knowing why. Fast forward a couple of years, I hit my, uh, that that card eventually got charged off. Okay. And I'm going to tell y'all right now. Oh, real quick. Start. Charged <laughs> off. Charged off. As in you paid it off. No, they wrote no. it off because I stopped paying on it. Okay, so charged off means oh, they oh, um they sent it to collections, right? They sent it to collections, okay. but they couldn't collect on it, so they were like, they did away with it. Okay, like we just gonna get like, you just not gonna pay it. We done. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. yep. How long did that take to get like for that to get to that point? Um, I'll say about a year or two. I I know I know I tried to pay it, and then I was paying minimum balances, and we already know at 26% or 28%, whatever, I think it was 28% right. at the time. With that, the 30% cash advances, I'm paying $35 yeah, you pay minimum, a month. You, you ain't even scratching the interest on that motherfucker. Exactly. What does charge off do to your credit? Is that really bad for your credit? It comes up as a derogatory item onto your credit. Oh, so yeah, it does okay. Have an impact. It does have an impact. How long does it take to get that up? It just all depends. Um, some people actually pay theirs off. I don't encourage that though. Okay, why? Because of the of a tool that I use. Oh, okay. Because, uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, we discussed that. We discussed that. All right, right. Got you. We discussed that later. They can't get that for free on the episode. Okay. Got okay. You. Cool. You don't want to give away all your. I. I. I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. We discussed yeah. that. All your goods. You know. I got my yeah. tea. In a mason jar, in a mason, come through mason jar. Yeah, it's like somebody pop up on the porch. That's what I do. I <laughs> I love love it. On the porch. But I um, all right. So you said well, we stopped that. You had um, the Your credit card charged off. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead a couple of weeks now. Mind you, at that point, I didn't understand credit. 
I didn't need credit. I had a cash car. You know how you just don't even think about it. You like, I got cash on deck. I had a couple of jobs. I made good money. I'm good. So I was a cash person. Yeah. But the thing about it is, nobody uses their credit until they need their credit. You go to get an apartment. I, I live with my pops. Then my pops bought a condo, so I paid him rent. So I didn't need credit for almost a decade. Wow. Everything I did was cash. I got a car. So you weren't building credit? No. So you she wasn't no using credit. it. She was just using cash for everything. I was using cash. And then when I did get a car, I had another 20% interest rate, 26% interest rate. Interest on like the really high. Heavy cobalt that I was I, I was basically ride, dr paying a Benz car note, driving a four-cylinder Chevy. Oh, my God. Damn. Yeah. Crazy. You should have just bought that shit cash. <laughs> you heard? But I bought it brand new. Actually, I actually had that car for 11 years. I, re I sold it maybe almost two years ago. Damn, man. That car that I met you, when I, when I met you, I was near that gold car that I used to have. No, I was paying for a Benz. We, yo, we, yeah, well, you've been in that car. We probably, you know. Yeah, it's <laughs> been a while. But I was paying for a Benz, basically, with a Chevy. You know, it had a system in it, but that's not the point. The point of the matter is I didn't, I, I wasn't educated enough or not even that. I just didn't even think about it. It wasn't important to me. Right. Like it wasn't on your mind at all. Not at all. I mean, and that's, that's, that goes for most people. Not realizing credit is a tool. It's a discount. People don't realize if your credit starts with three, four, five, or six, you don't have good credit. Wow. So only good credit is only when you're in the sevens and above. And after this whole COVID situation, that's changing because you have to look at it like this. You have to, f I always say, follow the money. Okay. Right? Banks are changing the way they do things. They're changing how people qualify. What's the, think about this. What's the largest purchase you'll ever make in your life? Your house. Exactly. So recently, Chase Bank, Wells Fargo, and a couple of other financial institutions raised the qualifier of credit to 700. Oh, wow. It used to be in the 600s, before you can get an FHA loan in the 600s, but all that's changing. Right. So right so all now those, is a, All those mm -hmm. programs that people use to get homes, are those gonna stop? We don't know. I actually work with a lot of realtors in the organ, and I work with a lot of realtors and mortgage bro brokers in the organization that I work with. Uh -huh. And they're everybody's up in arms because nobody knows this. There's so much uncertainty. But in the meantime, this is fertile ground to prepare. Okay. Because one thing that we know in recession times is when businesses blossom. Yeah. A lot of the businesses that have been operating um, successfully for over 100 years, those formed during the Great Depression. Right. When you, when you just look at the history and again, follow the money. When you look at it from that perspective, it lets you know, let me chop wood, carry water. We have to learn how to delay gratification. Right. We truly do. It's okay to, to look nice and look cute and all this other that's stuff. That's crazy, but man. But I mean, shit, that's, a, uh, that's, a, that's an extreme level of discipline when you have not been taught delayed gratification. That's why I'm in the industry I'm in because delayed gratification is a motherfucker. I like my yeah. Today. I mean, but think about it. Even in the industry that you're in, because people want to stunt on the gram, they can't wait to go to PF Chang's in the airport and be like, yeah, about to fly out, about to stop and give me some PF Chang's. Boom, quickly post it. And not only that, that's free promotion for PF Chang's. That's not promotion for them. Right, right. <laughs> so they're making PF Chang's money and not even making themselves money, and they're spending money. Right. The whole thing about it is it's, it's, a, it's a vicious cycle that we have to really understand where do I fit in this? How do I change my mindset so I can get out of this? And how do I start a different cycle? Now, can you like, cause I, I always have a hard time understanding what exactly credit is. I'm like okay. not a financial expert at all. And I think a I lot of people some. would appreciate if you just broke down what is credit. Cool. Just like a simple definition that can help us basically understand, you know, an elementary explanation of credit. Okay. I got some stats for you. Okay. And it's like a credit wheel, 100% of what builds a credit score. A FICO score is 
an average of all the three credit bureaus. You know, you have TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, correct, okay? So credit, your credit qualifies you for a job in some instances, qualifies you for your, did you guys know for car insurance, your car, there's all car insurance companies utilize a tier to determine how much they're going to charge you based yeah. on your credit? It's based on, I know it's based off of driving history too, cause my car insurance was exactly. like, I thought it was just driving history, but credit also, right, but they don't tell you it's credit though, huh? And age, credit is, age too, credit right? Is the main driver. Credit is the main driver for the rate that you're going to pay. Really? A lot of the average consumer does not know that. I did not know that. I your driving that. history cool. also plays a factor, but your your credit is the main driver. Uh, even though they pun, pun intended. Right. Okay. So basically how you break down your credit is 35% of it's payment history. 30% of it is the amount you owe. Uh-huh. 15% is the length of credit history. 10% uh -huh. is new credit opened. And 10% is the type of credit, whether it be a credit card, uh, a mortgage, car note, etc. Right. So payment history and your would that be credit to debt ratio is amount owed? Is that the same thing? that's it's it, the that's amount owed is the 30 percent we'll, we'll we'll start with the largest chunk which is your payment history right okay take 35. student loan take your student loan uh what do either one of you have student loans yes okay are your student loans current like paid up to date yeah yeah outside of oh let's just say pre-covid because covid changed everything right but let's just pre-covid if your student, say for example, if you had, I know a lot of people have student loans and a lot of people are not current on their student loans. That has a huge impact on your credit. That's 35%. If you do not have a deferment or forbearance or some type of forgiveness in place, that's going to have an impact on your credit. Mm. Not only that, a lot of people don't realize, even if you have to pay something, what, what the best way to do is contact whoever your student loan is through, find it's out what programs are available and say, yeah. will this arrangement bring my account to current? That's a very, very key piece. Right. You have to ask them, does this bring my account to current? Because if it doesn't, it's gonna have a negative impact on your credit. Wow. wow. Okay, so got you. That's one thing I, I, I've been very diligent about. I haven't set up a system to pay it off because I wasn't thinking that far ahead, mm -hmm. but I always kept them up to date. Either in forbearance or like paying on them or mm -hmm. confirming whatever options I had with the, uh, my student loans, but yeah. And you want to take it a step further. You ask them that question, you also ask them, to ask them can I get this in writing? Because when one thing people don't realize is sometimes whoever it was administered through, they sell those companies. Yeah. So if you don't have those in writing, yeah, that's true. you don't have anything to sold, back you up. Sally May sold it to Navient. Case in point. Sally May sold uh, that shit over to Navient. Right, 100%. Exactly. And, it, and, it, and I think I got another one that got sold over to another company when Sally May got sold out. That's and happened they, to me. And they have completely yeah. different systems than the system you had in place with the, the company. So. Exactly. But so when if you don't have that in writing, then them, what do you do? I'm sorry, go ahead, Deshaun. When they start selling them, is that like an opportunity to negotiate with that collection agency? It could be. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily, if there is, but that's I don't mean all they're going to have, they're going to buy by the same rules or they're going to have the same shit, standards and blockers, yeah. the other uh, loan service. Like they should yeah. be completely different compared to that previous loan service. All right, so I don't want to get caught up on student loans. <laughs> but no doubt. I don't Still, that's, that's something that people need to come check out. Um, mm -hmm. But like, that's a big one. But like, for instance, car notes, uh, like what about consistently paying the electricity bill? Because I had a scenario at one point in time where I wasn't paying my electricity bill on time. I was paying it, but it wasn't on time. And it was late several months in a row. And eventually they made me pay like a late fee. Do like small bills mm -hmm. like that help or? That all depends because you, did you guys realize that companies have to pay creditors 
to report onto your credit report, they have to pay the bureau. The credit bureaus are not government entities, they're private companies. Mm -hmm. So they have to actually like, say for example, T-Mobile. If I had, unless my T-Mobile bill goes into collections, which you know, after a couple of, they want their, they're gonna get their money either way. But it takes a while for some of them to actually go to collections, but sometimes it could be two or three months that you're behind, but it won't necessarily reflect on your credit report. But then so when not you hit all the, of them when report. That shit hits. Once that shit hits though. Once it hits collections, yeah, it's more than likely on your credit report. But there's even some instances where it could be in collections and not on your credit report. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. That is why. So what determines all this? Is it does it just no, depends on the whole lot of if they okay. pay. So I pay, I pay off the state for the IRS, right? Mm-hmm. And I should went into collections. But the, whatever the collections is for the IRS, it does not show up on my credit score. It's just in collections for the IRS. Right. So, the IRS has to pay the bureaus in order to report it onto your credit report. And they ain't gonna pay that shit. No, nah, there's millions of people that owe the IRS. If they, if it, it's so, Think about it. If they had to pay one dollar for everybody that has an account in collections, that would be a million dollars. That would be three hundred fifty-six million dollars. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. Damn. So, you're making money, even if you ain't paying them back all the way, they it's not even three hundred. But if you split that shit in half for the population, that's still like one hundred and fifty million dollars just for every. Let's just say a dollar. And that's just a dollar. Imagine the people paying like thirty-five, a hundred, two hundred. <laughs> Oh wow, that's a lot of money. It is, and Ooh. they're not the IRS doesn't want to spend that kind of money. Got you. So especially that's so when true. they have people and they they're having the same issues that everybody else is having. Right. A friend of mine's mom works for the IRS, and you know they they haven't had to furlough people. But remember when the government shut down last year, they had to do furloughs. The IRS can't afford to report everyone's derogatory status onto their credit report. Ay ay ay. So like. Um, that's off record. <laughs> this um, coronavirus and everything shutting down just showed me how everybody owes somebody. Like exactly everybody, the people you owe owe somebody, and then they owe somebody, and then they owe somebody, and then they owe somebody. Even, even the rich, rich people owe somebody that we ain't even think about. They owe like nah, you they, yeah. It's almost they like you're other people's money. So you have to figure out how to pay it. Yeah. And the thing about it is you definitely want to keep your debt down. Like, we'll, we'll, like for example, the 30%, the amount you owe, the part that makes up your credit score as well, that's a very, very key piece. Right. Especially for somebody who pays their bills on time. They're like, I pay my bills on time. I got credit cards. I do everything I'm supposed to do. Why is my score so low? Okay, well, if you have a $1,000 credit card and you owe $999. Yeah. Good. You want to keep that below 30%. Ideally, you want to keep that below 20, maybe 10. I mean, so, so my credit card is 200 and I mean 2500 limit, like 2500 limit, right? Mm -hmm. Um I want to keep Th that somewhere. 30% like, of that. Let me get so my like calculator. Like 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 5 600 bucks. Like 800 bucks, something like that. Yeah, about like, that. So don't go over 30% of whatever your credit line is, basically. Try not to, and then keep, you have to also factor in your interest, because once that interest hits, it's going to bump it yeah, back up. Yeah, that shit, that shit, yeah. I, I remember that shit got up to like eight, nine hundred dollars one time, and the interest, uh, my interest was like, I mean, I got a low interest rate, but it was like additional like 40, 50, 60 bucks. Exactly. So on a $2,500 credit card, 30% is 750 But if you're getting charged let's say 20% interest, I hope not, that's another $210. So you had, you have to tap on the 210 to the 750 to stay below 30%. Mm. It's wild, but the thing yeah. about it is, it's, a, it's, it's not a game, it's your life. You have to look at this like you're breathing air. You have to treat your money, your credit, your, your finances and your livelihood, just like you treat your body. You have to love it and nourish it. But that's the thing. Everybody ain't loving their body and loving some nourishing and they, you know, they shit. That's so a whole, like, yeah, that's a whole other podcast. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm exactly. saying? That's, but, a, whole that's a different episode. 
but it's, a lot it's, of people um money is a real sensitive subject I, I feel like for a lot of people even, well, even people who have knowledge with it like they still seem to be not be good with their money I'll, I'll give you my family for example oh. credit I know for for my family credit has always been a part of the conversation like once like a lot of my cousins we're all around the same age we're in our 30s 40s we all have homes children blah 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 so as we started you know maturing family was like all right so you got a kid you're gonna buy a crib what's good you know and money was always a part of the conversation but when i talked to some of my other friends that's not the case they're like nobody taught me about credit i mean Honestly, nobody talked to me about credit either until I had bad credit. And they were like, oh, well, you know, you should have been doing that. I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me? Right, but right. now we have an open dialogue about that because that's important. When you look at in terms of generational wealth, the, 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 the families that have survived from all the back, way back to, like I was saying, those depression times, that's because they had generational wealth. They had those conversations. They took life insurance policies and were able to start businesses after they cashed them out. They did things like that. Man, my mom, man. Look at Master P. Bruh. He's got a no limit with a life insurance policy cash out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I guess one of his grandparents, or I can't remember the exact story, but he got a lump sum of cash and that's how he started No Limit Records. But that's the thing about generational wealth and having those conversations. Those are very important. And in our community, that's not the case. We always act like the game is to be sold and not to be told but that's not how it's supposed to be. How are we gonna get ahead as a community if we don't have these conversations? And it's not even just in our community, because I mean, it's even poor white people, man. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, but I, I, I'm, look. Your focus you, is us. I know, <laughs> I know, I What's know. What's near and dear to my heart. We ain't, we ain't gonna turn it into that. We ain't gonna turn yeah. it into that. But, so um, because credit, like, what are some other financial tips that you have? Some financial tips? Follow the no well master that formula that we just broke down. Okay. Master the 30% of the amount you owe, master the 35% of payment history. How about start out with some revolving credit? Okay. If you don't have revolving credit, I have access to tools that allow for you to acquire more. Right. But the thing about it is if once you understand the formula and how it's all broken down, it just becomes like Okay. Water. Because right. basically, becomes, like you want to keep you want to keep your debt within thirty percent of what your income. Mm, essentially, well, okay. I would suggest. Actually, I don't. I want to make sure this is good advice, but just think about it like this: treat it, treat your credit as if you're trying to get a mortgage. Okay. And if you go online, you go on to the HUD website or you go on any lender, any private lender's website, they have breakdowns of the qualifications, the credit qualifications that you need in order to get a home. Get a Credit Karma or a Credit Sesame login. Now, I will caveat, caveat it by saying, be careful with those because, not, don't, don't be careful with them, they're free. Okay, free is always good. But they're also marketing companies they try to get you to to purchase a, another credit right. card they're partnered up with other companies that try to get you to get more credit but utilize their free tools so you have an idea of where you stand it's not going to be an exact number but it's good to know where you stand first because you guys would be surprised a lot of people don't even know what their credit looks like right right now do you trust um apps like credit karma I have Credit Karma and Credit Sesame, but those okay. aren't your exact. Those are a right. rough estimate of your FICO score because one time- You might as well oh, just log in and get an Experian or a FICO or just go get, I mean, not a FICO, Experian or uh, what, are, uh, what are the other two? TransUnion. Um, TransUnion. TransUnion. Yeah. It's yeah. just good to have a rough estimate. Right. In Am order, I'm, I'm, you, get a, you get, a free credit, get a free credit report every year. Use it. Because a lot of times people don't realize there are derogatory, incorrect, and inaccurate things on there that could be deleted. And where can yeah, we get that I, free I, credit I, I, uh, score I, I, from every I year? Every year, I, ooh, you know what? 
I think you can order it directly from the bureaus. Okay. You know what? That's a good question because I think I've, I've ordered mine, but I've ordered mine through the company that I'm with. But, um, and prior to that, I did it through my lender when I was, uh, actually last year when I refinanced my mortgage. Okay. Oh, but Google. there, um, you can just type in uh, just a simple Google search. Mm -hmm. How do I get my free credit report? And, um, can you tell us about your business and everything that you do? as a financial advocate. But wait, before wait, before we get into that, I have one last question. And one last what? question before I forgot. Um, this was something that I learned about and I wanted to know the relevancy of this new factor. It was the uh, debt to income ratio. Mm -hmm. That was something that I ran into when I went to purchase my car some years back. And I had a pretty good credit score that I did not know. I was not aware that debt to income ratio was something that was relevant. That is relevant. It's relevant for any time you go to get a loan. Now, I don't have any hard numbers for you. A lot of that information is available on the web, but that is also something that people should consider before they go to make a large purchase. Your two largest purchases are gonna be your car and your home. So naturally, you wanna be equipped with the tools to understand what you need in order to qualify for a certain amount of money. And not only that, like, um, trying to think i think i was on the carmax website some years ago and you, it's like a plug and play you plug in how much you want to pay and they tell you what you might need to put down and all of that and there's also some other tools on there um i don't know if it's on carmax but there's i mean this information is out there where you can plug in what your income is and they'll let you know what you can qualify for but you want to do that ahead of time and you guys want to ask me why why? Okay, you guys both have car notes. Do you have a car note, Deshaun? Yes. Okay, when you did you get yours from you got yours from a dealer? Uh uh, I got mine through the bank. Okay. Oh, you're smart. Okay, so I got mine from the dealer, right? And I sat in there for about two hours before they could give me a loan that was something I would be willing to pay. Cause they came at me with some old crazy number. I was like, that's a mortgage. No, not for a car. Lo and behold, by the time I got, so 30 days later, I got my credit report and I had about 13 inquiries. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, everybody come to the end. Oh, okay. we, we, you were running your credit like crazy, trying to find something to approve for you. Yes. And those all have an impact on your credit score. Right. All those hard inquiries. Well, that, that, that's there, a hard money, inquiry. Yeah, you sitting there minding your business. Meanwhile, your credit score can Carrying be impacted up. by 50 to 100 points based right. off that one visit. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. That's almost like sue worthy. Like you can't sue nobody for messing up your credit like that. I mean, it's all, it's all, you know, everybody's different, but if they do that many inquiries, because some people, their credit is terrible. They might even need a co-signer. So how many, I'm sorry, I missed that, but I was, I was thinking about something. I just thought about some shit that I could do right now while this shit is going on. So you say, what about um, inquiries? How many inquiries did they do? They did like 13 on mine at that Dang. time. Yeah. That probably had an impact of like, I can't, uh, I don't even really know, because put it like this. The following months, my credit score dropped probably about 40 points. Wow. Based off of that. Yeah. But sometimes 40 points is all you need to qualify for certain loans. Because think right. about it, like exactly. I said. That's like the bar or whatever that you just slip under because of them. Exactly. Not, but th that's why you have to be equipped. But I didn't, I mean, I knew, but I didn't know. Right. I didn't think I would need my credit. And that's another thing. Like people always think like, like I said, don't wait until you need your credit to have good credit, have good credit and then use it as a tool because it's a discount. Do you want to drive the Chevy or the Benz? You're going to pay the same amount. Because my, my, my interest rate is only two point. It's, it's two point something. Okay. So you're doing your thing. But that's because I had somebody like working with me, like, but I went through a lot. Like, I, I, when I went to get my car, I spent months. Like, I didn't get a car, like, within a week or something. I probably spent three, four months looking for a car, you know, actually talking to different people. I went to a credit union first. I had already established a, uh, um, 
uh, an account with a credit union. So I went to them for the loan. That was smart. They kind of told me where my shit stood, and you know, like the kind of interest rate I would get. And then I had somebody who I was close to, and she kind of just went with me. When I went to get my final, like the final place I went to get my car, she went with me and she sat down with me and she taught me to hustle. Cause I had already figured out the, um, the debt to income ratio. That was like, when I got introduced to that, I had to figure that part out. That's what took so long. Once I got that resolved, it was like, your credit score is pretty good. So we'll give you a pretty decent interest rate. And I ended up going through the uh, loan company through the, uh, through the dealership versus my credit union because they gave me a lower interest rate than the credit union did. I think okay. the credit union was like 2.5, 2.4, they gave me like 2.1. Shoot, hey, penny saves a penny earned because that can make a difference of 30, 40 dollars, but still, over time, you're paying that for a few years, you, you know. Yep, so, but uh, okay, your business. My business, okay, so basically, I am, I serve as a referral agent. I help empower people to get in good financial shape without dis disclosing too much and compromising some of the, you know, there's certain things I can and can't talk about on certain forums, but I will say this. I absolutely love what I do because it, like I said, like the knowledge that I was sharing on here, it's that and some I have access to a will trust and power of attorney. I have access to budgeting tools. I have access to paying off debt that I have that's outstanding. And also I work with a nonprofit organization that helps go into schools and educate children on how to establish credit, maintain their credit and under and teach their families in some cases. We also provide scholarships as well. So that's the cool thing about the business that I'm in. Um, I just I thank God for it. I've only been in it for about three months, but I was actually looking for something to do to supplement my income. But you guys know I have two small kids, nine and four. Okay, so if I'm out of the house, why am I spending time out of the house that I'm paying for to maintain and away from my kids? So I had to find something that was home-based. And that was the most important part. How would someone get in contact with you? Your they, can, they can get in contact with me at um, my Instagram, which is Lindsay Ultra, L-Y-N-D-S-A-Y underscore Ultra, U-L-T-R-A. Or they can call me on my cell phone. I'm joking. <laughs> but it, it's best to just... You should have gotten the Mike uh, Jones phone number. You should have gotten the Mike Jones. You should have the exactly. Mike Jones. Exactly. I do have contact information on there, but uh, the number that, you know, I got one of those, I'm gonna be honest, I got one of those little fake Google numbers and I ain't feeling that. So I'm getting ready to move to a different platform to have a, a stronger communication mechanism. Okay. Um, but the best way to contact me is through uh, my Instagram and a DM. I talk to people all day. Oh, that's what's up. Cool, cool. Oh, God, we got, do we already follow her on Instagram? We already follow, follow Lindsay? On light bulb moment, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. So you can tell you can tell who the active one is, right? You can tell who the active one is. Like, do we follow Lindsay? I'm trying to get this motherfucker to do more. Yeah. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on. I learned a thank couple of things. Having a couple of light bulb moments. Wow, credit is very interesting. It's such a a deep world. It's a deep world, but like I said, it's a tool. Right. Do you do you discuss more than just uh, credit, just overall financial literacy, other aspects of making um, um, uh, streams of revenue? You know what I'm saying? Explaining residual income, like that's all the different forms of that's all the stuff that comes in the package too. So, so you mean you financial teach that. everything within the financial literacy? Yeah, right. so I don't, yeah. don't want to imagine like it's just credit, like credit, credit, because we've been discussing credit this whole time and all these different forms. So I want to understand that it's not just credit, it's budgeting, it's financial. Right. That's 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 one of the beauties of the business, how to buy yeah. a house, how to buy a parking space, how to buy a property, how to expand in the property. Well, a lot of that starts with credit though. It's, that's the foundation. And to be honest, that's not part of what I do, but that is the foundation because you want to set credit goals. Like I said, credit is a tool. So with the tools, what are you going to do? 
my pops has been talking about that shit for a minute, man. Like how to take your credit and turn it into like money. And I sent you a link. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. I ain't looked at it yet. I okay, mean, so when you get an opportunity, I want you to take a look at it because it talks about group group economics. And thing about it is, if you don't, okay, I'm gonna just give you a quick statistic. 80% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Yes, sir. So if that's the case, if everybody's living paycheck to paycheck, how do they have access to obtain wealth? They don't have extra money. Thankfully, like I said, I got involved with this because I was like, I need extra money. This was before Ooh. the interest rates went down. Man, and I'm I mean, like, all right, I need to start buying up freaking investment properties. I'm trying I to figure out how I made extra money. I made way more money last year and like I didn't even see it. Like I ain't even I can't even give accounts for a vast majority of it outside of like putting it somewhere and paying. Do you have an accountant? I have a financial advisor. I ain't gonna say I have an accountant. You need to get you an accountant. I can probably I think I have somebody I can refer you to, but the, that's one of the the advantages of having a home. I I strongly encourage everybody to have a home based business because of the tax advantages. Um my organization, I went to a couple of different trainings with some accountants. And when I tell you, when they broke down all the different advantages from I having a home based business. Is this, is, is, how much is it? Is this program or industry cost effective to get involved with? Yes, it like, is. is. Is it not priced out? Because I know a lot of these organizations, we're not going to say, me and you had a discussion, we're not going to throw that word out there because I don't want to tarnish nothing. But they have an entry fee or something like that. Is it like within range for the normal joke? It is. And then there's also, um, actually, there's a lot of people that didn't, they got their money back because of how well they worked everything. Right, so, right, right. You recoup your money that you invest within a certain amount of time. Okay, so. Some people did it within two days. Nice. I want to I, I wanna, I, I wanna continue this, but. I have an idea, so we, we running up on what, like, it's got to be close to 30 minutes. It's time, yeah. So I'm going to go through the cosmos real quick. Um, we're in Taurus. The moon is in Taurus. Taurus season officially starts. I'm a Taurus, so this is my season. Yay! Are you a Taurus too, Lindsay? No, I'm not, but I love Taurus. It's so tenacious. I know, I know. What's your sign? I'm a Pisces with oh, a... Uh, Sagittarius <laughs> moon and Gemini rising, some crazy I know, stuff. It's a lot. Yeah, like your full zodiac is like a whole lot of stuff. A, we just yeah. talked a little bit. But um, during this time, make sure y'all uh, work on your throat chakra. Mm. Yeah, work on that, your, your, your voice. Um, get, get into your green thumb, you know, go into the garden mm. or go to the park, you know, hang around some nature, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Nourish yourself with natural foods. Um, that's always good. That's good all throughout the year. Oh, oh, come to the uh, come to some new shit that I'm about to start called meditation moment. We'll talk about that. When we uh oh, off. OK. Meditation moment. Looking forward to that. Stay tuned for that. And uh, support a cause. Uh, that's an easy one. It's a lot of causes out here to support. Like yes, a whole lot. I'm a cause. Support my ass. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But um. We'll have to end right now. <laughs> I enjoyed this, guys. Man, this this tell us again where you, excuse me. Ooh, that's that. That's that. That shit is strong. Uh, tell us again where you can we can find you at. Lindsay underscore ultra. You're going to tag me, right? Mm -hmm. Just tag your girl. Y'all click on a little tag or whatever. But Lindsay L Y N D S A Y underscore ultra U L T R A. Live that ultra lifestyle. Ultra means extreme. And there's really nothing extreme about me. I'm just extremely passionate about serving people and helping people get to wherever they want to be in life. You want to give me your email? Sure, why not? Letter L, <laughs> Harper, H-A-R-P-E-R, 220 at gmail.com. That's a general email. But um, yeah, the best way to get in contact with me is through IG, little DM action. 
Awesome. Sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm at my parents' house. So all yeah. good. Oh, you're nice and cozy. Sure. Yeah, right. right. That nigga's in the bed right now. That nigga's in the bed. Right. Well, I'm in my in bedroom. Bed. Well, a bedroom, yeah. not my bedroom. You can find me and Deshaun on IG, Facebook, uh, Light Bulb Moment, L I T E B U L B Moments. And you can find Deshaun at Deshaun Duran. Is it Deshaun Duran on that? Yeah. Uh, IG? You can find yeah. me at Awesome Nia, A W E S O M. Capital N I A one seven, right? Exactly how my name is spelled: D E S H A U N D U R O N, and just an at in front of it, and that's my everything. Ooh, I don't <laughs> give a fuck. What I, uh, uh, yeah. uh, I gotta say about me, but um, check us out on uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, Google. Oh, uh, we're on YouTube. You can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. Um. Radio, uh, Spotify. I, can never, I can never remember that shit. Radio, Radio One, Radio Republic, Radio Public. I forget what that shit is called. Yeah. But I'm um, on a lot of streaming networks. A so. lot of streaming apps. You yeah, know that shit, son. <laughs> no, for real, check us out. We appreciate you, Lindsay, man. We appreciate you taking time out of your day to do this oh, with man. us. Oh, man. I enjoyed this, guys. Thank you for having me. We have to do it again sometime when I have yeah, some more progress to report. That's oh, yeah, keep us up to date, man. You know, you'll be our financial go-to. You'll be the person yeah. we do it. Yeah, so, we can, like, make it a, about a money with thing, radio. possibly, or, you know, definitely. Hey, I'm down. I'm down. Keeping people up to date. You know what I'm saying? Once you start getting into the stock market and everything else, you can kind of tell people what the temperature is. Oh, right. shoot. That's a whole other spectrum, man. That's licensing yeah. and all that other stuff. I'm trying to... You You're know more that about that that market that. Than you, bro. We ain't gonna live in ourselves. But yo, all right, boo. Okay. Yo, yeah. Peace out. Peace out. Peace.